morning. We have a full house today and a, a rather full agenda, so uh, I'd like to get started. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for attending this meeting of the SUNY Erie Board of Trustees. Faculty members, students, welcome. We're glad you're here. We're going to be hearing from you a little bit today. And uh, always great to start our meetings hearing from the people for whom we work, which is the students and, and the college community. So, Dr. Sagai, would you start off absolutely, uh, absolutely. with that, please? Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. So, part of our Finish Strong uh, for graduation, today we have our uh, clubs and, and organization. Um, Jason, you're going to talk to us about that? Absolutely. Here? Um, so, we have several of our clubs um, and their um, advisors with us today. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what they do, uh, what their clubs offer, and then um, for their members to talk about their plans to finish strong what they're going to be doing um, after their life at SUNY. Um, so how about we start with um, the Muslim Student Association, Dr. Um, Abdul, uh, I'm sorry, Abdul Haleem Bird, and uh, Tahira Shvigi Sanubi are your, the um, advisors. So I'll have you introduce your students, and then um, you can talk about the organization. Thank you. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody today? Good. Good, 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 good. Now, I probably will start off speaking eventually. I think it's going to happen because of the reason my voice is going to probably change. Mm -hmm. So it may become quite high pitched. So, um, but hopefully, you know, I'll be able to speak for a while. So I'm going to try to be brief as well. Um, so, um, I have the, uh, the pleasure of being the uh, MSA uh, advisor along with uh, my co advisor. And uh, the MSA has been a long time coming, Muslim Student Association. Um, as we know, and, uh, and we look around our campuses, we see that there are a considerable amount of students <coughs> who uh, are Muslims. Um, some persons you may know by their dress, um, and some you may not. Because not in Islam, not everyone is required to have a head covering, um, and uh, some persons prefer not to. But that's you know that's entirely up to them. But the bottom line is is that we have a considerable amount, and being a con being a community college, uh, we know that there's a growing number of immigrants coming into the uh, into our area, and we can perhaps. See that we're going to see more and more of these students soon. The, the issue has been over time that these persons have not had a voice. They've been impacted by different life events, which are as inclusive of, of being here in the education system, but they have not had a voice. And this organization, this club, which is, is on a national scale, so let's just say that this MSA organization here is uh, attached to a number of other MSA organizations countrywide. But locally, we have UB and Bus State. What's important in all cases for all of our students is that we all try to embrace you know, the, um, the mantra of Sunni. And that is that we, we respect uh, diversity and we respect, you know, um, all efforts being made to help our students meet their measure of success, whatever that is, and to also feel safe. But we do know that often enough when people hear Muslims, they hear what? All too often, terrorists. You know? um, and all too often what has happened is that we have not listened to their narratives. We have not taken the time to meet these students. We make judgments, we make assessments without knowing these persons. Fortunately, this organization, because it is Sunni, is open to all the students. Because what we need to do is to encourage, we need to encourage communication amongst each other and take the opportunity to get to know each other. And that is a primary purpose of this organization. 
to this dispel myths because what we'll find is, is that we have more in common than not. But this is a beginning. We had a previous president, Dr. McCoy, who on several occasions met with the, uh, the imams and the other uh, uh, persons uh, of, um, of significance within the community. And so you should know that these persons have the backing of the community. And we keep in mind that this is a community college and you know, over time, hopefully, we're gonna see the numbers grow. But what we're trying to do here is, of course, do what? To establish a, a fold of what? Of, uh, of, hey, we all belong, and to, uh, to give each one a sense that they should be here, that they can achieve here, that they can be. So I thank you for, for this time. Uh, and the last thing I do want to say very quickly is that one of the things that we need to also keep in mind here is that we need to uh, work towards being culturally responsive and culturally sensitive. And that's another reason why we have this organization. Now, I defer to uh, <coughs> Ms. Sanobi. Hi, I'm Tahira Shaheed Sanobi, librarian here. And uh, when I was first approached about being a co-advisor to MSA, I have to say I was a little hesitant at first because I'm not very well versed in Islam. And I'm saying this because I did not want to be a disservice to these students. I understood the magnitude of their needs and you know, I really wanted to help them. And after I met with them for the first time, I really realized that I needed them just as much as they needed me. I mean, you know, they have educated me, they have challenged me, they have equally allowed me to challenge them. And it's been amazing working specifically with, you know, no offense, <laughs> but I've gotten a chance to work with the young ladies in MSA. And they have the most heartfelt stories and I'm thankful that I've been able to provide a safe space for them. And you know, one thing, you know, just kind of adding on to what Dr. Boone said is that we could really benefit, and I know Dr. Sagai, they have spoken with me about this. These students and other students could really benefit from having counselors who are trained in cultural sensitivity. And you know, not only the training, but those who are empathetic and want to create an environment for all students. And again, you know, I won't go on and on, but I'm really thankful. I just want to congratulate these students for graduating. Mm -hmm. They are passionate, they are intelligent, they are resilient, and it's been an honor to work with them this semester. So. Mohammed and Abdul, was there anything you wanted to say? Or? Uh, yes. Um, so my name is Mohammed Powell. Um, I'm currently a computer science student. I think there are, there are different aspects I could touch on but I think I'll speak briefly on the most important part, right? Erie Community College, right? I think the, the gems and the resource and untapped potential is there. And if I were to summarize or condense the, the purpose of our club into two points, it would be um, the preservation of humanity and um, education. Right? You can't have those two things, and if you don't have those two things, you will not have a, a thriving community. Um, sure, easy to see your college is not for year, this is a normal situation, sure. However, there is, as uh, Dr. Guru pointed out, a large immigration population coming into the U.S., um, the, the Buffalo area as well, uh, a lot of talent there. And so um, we're coming from our aspect um, as Muslims and also non-Muslims as well to show to truly really educate on what is Islam about because there's a lot of uh, misinformation out there. And unfortunately, sometimes people are harmed because of that misinformation. Students, faculty members sometimes, you know, um, when you go by uh, city campus uh, post building, no, um, Oak Street building, it says, you know, he has no home care. And we champion that, we're, we're behind that 100%. Um, but we're really trying to turn that concept into something more concrete 
actionable steps, you know, something more on the lines of those who um, that hate because of uh, religion, gender, creed, sexual orientation, um, have no home here. Those people, those uh, people who uh, exhibit those behaviors. So that's really what we're here for. We do uh, programs, events for students, stuff like that. Not that many, we just started, um, but um, yeah, that's pretty much <coughs> what we're here for. And I'm gonna defer to uh, our Vice President Abdul Masood. I was gonna say, can, um, would you mind, um, I guess, telling the board kind of what your plans are for post-graduation? When you leave Erie, what's, what's your journey? Sure, so and actually I started uh, ECC 2017 business admin. I graduated, I went to uh, UB, but then I changed to uh, computer science. So then I came back here. I mean, I was already acclimated with ECC. I had a lot of good experiences with a lot of the professors um, and also faculty members like uh, Dr. Farouk. So I decided to come back here, come back to computer science. So I have one more semester and then hopefully UB for my bachelor's. So forth. Excellent. What about you, Abdul? Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Abdul Masood. I'm from Afghanistan. And I'm an immigrant student at Kiyo Community College. And we major in engineering sciences and probably planning to go to UB, inshallah, for mechanical engineering. This is my last semester, and I'll be graduating this May. So just a little thing about uh, my experience as an immigrant in here is as, as some of, most of us might know, it is very hard to, uh, to go from one place to another, from one background, from one community to another and adapt to that community. It is very hard to adapt. But at ECC, <coughs> because of my professors, because of my mentors, it, that task became very easy. And I, and I felt that sense of belonging. However, as Dr. Kluck mentioned, uh, the amount of immigrants are rising really, uh, like they are increasing in high number greatly. And for that reason, we need a, uh, there has to be some activities or organization that can approach those issues of immigrants being here and, and how they can feel belonging here. And I feel like that, I believe that NSA is that and, and will continue to work to be a safe haven for people of every background. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We also Thank have you. one more. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's here. My apologies. I'm going to read off my phone because I get to notice in front of people who start my name. Um, so hello, my name is Kitty or Mohammed. Um, I'm in general studies. Um, <coughs> My plan after graduation is to take a semester off and hopefully in the spring of 2025, I plan to go to Buffalo State to pursue journalism. And um, my, my position in the Muslim Association Club, also known as the MSA Club, is I'm the event uh, uh, coordinator. Um, my position involves promoting the club activities through uh, the graphic designs uh, of the flyers. I don't make all the flyers, which what I like about this club, because we help each other when we need it, even though it's not our position to do so. And currently, I'm working on promoting our Instagram page um, to put the club out more and to draw more people in. And I also want to mention, before I finish, my experience here at ECC. Um, so this is my third year, because I switched majors last summer. And um, I want to say, I'm not just saying this in front of the camera or in front of you guys, but honestly, made it from my heart that ECC helped me, it yeah. saved me, it yeah. kind of put me on track to uh, for a better future, and I'll forever owe you guys that. If I can turn this up. While we're over here, why don't we uh, highlight the Culture Club, which Kibir is also a member of. Uh, before we move on yes. from the, the MSA, yeah. uh, thank you. We see you, and, and we appreciate you being here today, and we value your presence here at, at ECC. Um, we should note uh, that you're here during the holiest month of the Islamic year, exactly. right? Uh, so we uh, we wish you a generous Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem, and um, an easy fast. <laughs> Thank you uh, for all, all of you for being here and for sharing your experience. And uh, we want you to know that you're welcome and recognized and embraced. Thank you.
Club is in its second year. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with the students. I was approached by several of our student ambassadors last year uh, wanting to really create a club to honor everyone's different cultures, to celebrate them, and to share and learn from each other. Uh, it's really been a wonderful experience. We've met people from all over the world celebrating all different cultures. Uh, although this Thank you. 
Some of the things we've done in the past, we do a spring art show every year. We've had art show now um, off campus at several commercial galleries. We've had it on campus. Um, it's actually uh, next Friday. We're in a small gallery on Allen Street for First Friday, which is the citywide event uh, where all the art galleries open up the doors on the first Friday of the month. Um, so that's pretty exciting. And we do a lot of art projects at city campus, art installations.
but the art club was this first step into a community of artists like me who wanted to create and make things. And I could sort of interact with these people. Um, and it's been amazing. And you know, now I'm, I'm not only just part of that club, but I'm a member of the sort of governing pieces, uh, which is just, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of the only reasons I even make it out to campus anymore because I'm taking so many online classes. Mm -hmm. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, because, I mean, any excuse I can have to be out there is, is amazing. Basically, our club, it's, we see it as a form of 
of escapism from the um, stress and anxiety of the school life. Like, we're always in the lounge playing games, discussing topics about anime. We value it like it's our lives. <laughs> it's our lives. <laughs> um, but we're very open to everybody. You'll catch one of us always in the lounge, and we've one of the most uh, longest clubs here at ECC and uh, at North Campus. Yeah. At North Campus. Yeah. And we, for the most part, we're open to everybody. Like, you say, hey, can I join? We'll let you ride in. Um, for after ECC, uh, I'm not too, sh I want to go towards electrician type work. I'm probably going to move over to a trade school. I haven't chosen which one yet, but going from Gen Ed to electrician. My name is Miles. I am a computer science major. Uh, never touched college in my life before. I, I still don't know how it works sometimes. Um, the Anime and Gaming Club, it started with our founder. The guy was sitting in the cafeteria and thought to himself, well, how do I make my college experience a lot better? We unite people based on a common factor, and our common factor is anime and gaming. Kind of like our president said here, we we provoke escapism from the stress and the workload of college. You know, imagine turning in an assignment, you know, a day later, and then you have an exam next week. It very uh, clogs you up. So our club basically insinuates that you have a community, a, you know, a belonging and a, a place to relax and whatnot. We are silently inclusive. I mean, we're not, you know, as primary as these guys, which. I was very enamored by their descriptions of the club, by the way. <laughs> but we do offer just, just a, I guess like a gap in someone's life to just take it, take a load off, you know, enjoy some anime, do a game once in a while, just <laughs> sit and relax. It's not a big deal. Um, and we also have a tournament that we're doing on April twelfth, where we're going to have a bunch of people compete. In a, in a video game, that's mm -hmm. going to be a bunch of fun. There's going to be a bunch of talking all around and whatnot. What's your plan after here, Miles? Um, kind of undecided, but I think for, I'm going to take a year off because I jumped from high school to college. I didn't get no kind of break. I was constantly academically focused. You know what I mean? So it's it's a bit of a rush. So I want to take a year off, get, get a work experience, get some money, and then UB, four-year degree, and whatnot. <laughs> Thank you all. And I think um, the one I kind of overarching theme is that being involved on campus um, really does help you to succeed, both academically and otherwise. All of the studies show that, that the more linked you are to your college, the more involved you are at your college, the greater your level of success. So thank you for having our students this thank morning. You. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. 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 It's good to hear from the students, as always. Let's uh, quickly introduce ourselves, and we'll start the formal part of the meeting. Katie? Hi, I'm Katie Marshall. I'm the Dean of Continuing Education in the Workforce Development Department. Good morning. I'm Arno. I'm the Vice President of Student Affairs. Good morning. I'm Jessica Schultz, Chief of Campus Safety and Emergency Management. Paul Davis. 
Mayhew, Business Manager, Risk Assessment. Good morning, Christopher Sanchez, Director of Talent Management and Employee Engagement. Hi, Laura Tash, HR Special Projects Legal. Hi, Eric Mills, the Vice President of Enrollment Management. Good morning, Ryan, Director of HR Renew. Melody Baker, uh, Vice uh, Chair. <laughs> I just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Phillips, Board of Trustees, Secretary. Ken Crowley, Trustee. Uh, Jeff Stone, Board Chair. I am the Guy President. Kenneth Morrison, Trustee. Uh, Cameron Lloyd, Student Trustee. I see you, Len Lenahan. You're online from a sunnier place. I am at present. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> and Gail? Yeah, Frazier, Executive Assistant to the President. Kathy Costo, ABC Environment. Bob Germoni, IT. Uh, Ryan Noble, IT. Thank you all. Uh, no. I have questions. Oh, did we miss Cam? No. Running for re election too in April. Or is it just me? I'm the only one. Like, you, you're the only one. Black Swan. Yeah, just the, the student right trustees okay. running for that. Yes. <laughs> Everybody else. Let's begin uh, with our roll call, Carrie, please. Melody Baker? Here. Ken Crowley? Here. Len Lenahan? Here. Amanda Lau is excused. Candace Morrison? Here. Carrie Phillips? Here. Jeffrey Stone? Here. Cameron Lloyd? Here. All right, thank you, Carrie. I'll call the meeting to order, the formal portion of the meeting to order at 9.37. We did have a quorum at 9, so that was good. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we've had a circulation of our minutes from our last meeting on February 29th. Everyone's had a chance to look at those. Any comments? I've given uh, Gail just a couple of small corrections. Janet Grams's last name, an update uh, uh, on, on uh, I, uh, a date change, and uh, a reporting the fact that we took no formal action in executive session last meeting and those will be added to the minutes but subject to those changes we have a motion to approve uh, second the motion and anyone make the motion i'll make the motion. Yeah, okay. second uh, all in favor aye. Aye. aye those minutes are approved we have a presentation uh dr sagai right from our, our auditors carl widmer and i believe charles may be with him today charles trache yeah hi carl all right, everybody. Yes, Carl will be done as well. There it is. If this doesn't go well, you can head over to the student lounge and do some gaming. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. Very interesting. That was, that was cool to hear how much you had going on there. Very impressive. All right. Um, one technical question to bring up. Will the presentation be brought up separate or should I share it when I'm ready? Why don't you share, Carol, because you know it better. That sounds good. All right. Thank you all. Well, we'll get right into it. Good morning, everybody. Um, introduction from Jeff. But my name is Carl Widmer. I'm a partner at Fisher Malecki, and we did the audit for the college this year. With me today is Charles Trottier, uh, director. He'll be doing the, the full audit next year, but he was a key piece on the past several years working on the audit staff as well. And we're here today to present to the full board the, the results of our audit for the college's fiscal year ended August 31st, 2023. Um, so this group knows we did have a chance to meet with the Budget Audit Facilities Committee a couple weeks ago to go over the drafts in more detail. So today we'll, in the interest of time, get the more express version of the presentation. But we do just have a short slideshow that helps walk through the audit process as well as a little bit of the financial results. So I'll, I'll pull that up. Everybody seeing that okay? Yes. Very good. So, <clears throat> Get right into it. The, the audit each year, as your external auditors, we have a responsibility to communicate certain, certain communications about the audit um, to this group, as well as the committee that we met with a couple weeks ago. But rather than go through all of them in detail, um, there is a letter an auditor's communication letter that includes all of these things in great detail um, in our final deliverables package. But for today, I just want to highlight a couple of these. And the first is our responsibility under 
what you see there is gas is generally accepted auditing standards and our responsibility as your auditors is not to take responsibility for the financial statements it's actually to get everything from the college they're your financial statements and then apply our expertise in performing a risk assessment in designing a successful audit of those financial statements and why that's important is that users of the college's financial statements and that's anybody who picks up this report and reads through it so students faculty branching agencies banks they're going to look to Drescher Malecki as your external auditors for that expert third-party assurance that the financial statements are fairly stated and that they can be relied upon so while you do have you know a more than competent staff who's putting these financials together throughout the year maintaining your records the audit process allows a CPA firm to come in and perform the audit process to provide that assurance another distinction I'd like to bring up is you hear auditors sometimes that's associated with fraud our responsibility during the financial statement audit is to gain assurance over those numbers that are in the financials it isn't to search for fraud I just like to point that out to anybody who's not you know familiar with the audit process year-round when we hear auditors sometimes it carries a connotation along with fraud it is a factor you know during the performance of our our audit financial statement audit and in the event we encountered any fraud we would communicate it no issues with that at all the other one I'll skip down to is independence so I just covered why it's important that the college gets an audit and what role that Drescher Malecki serves is we are going to be providing that professional opinion and the financials can be relied upon so independence comes into play it's imperative if we have users of the college's financial statements relying on a third-party evaluation of those financial statements that we're independent from the college that we don't have any conflicts of interest or carry any bias in our approach to the college's audit so each year myself Charles and our entire audit staff we evaluate and review our relationships as it relates to the college with board members with members of key faculty and make sure that we don't have any conflicts of interest that would put us in a an unsafe position to be your your auditors but this year again as in prior years we don't have any issues and we're in the the right position to serve as your external auditors so next is a graph we'll get into the financial statement highlights real bird's-eye view here this graph is going to present five years of trend data and it's your operating activity you have your revenues your money coming in and your expenses your money going out so that is your blue line is your revenue and if we're going to key in on 2023 your revenues came in at about a hundred and two million dollars and your red line the expenses came in at eighty five million dollars so when you're looking at the financial statements you'll see that net activity resulted in an increase of seventeen million dollars to net position now something that this group has appreciated in the past and that we've included are those dotted lines and what that does is it pulls out a couple of activities that occur in the financial statements that aren't their non graph activity so we pull out the effects of certain long-term liabilities that get recorded just to see on a more operating basis a more of a budget basis how did the college perform we also did it on the revenue side which is the yellow line to show that I'm sorry it's the orange line the orange line is an adjusted revenues line because for a few years there there were significant what we consider one-time revenue sources not exactly expected year-to-year for operations and that primarily represents all the relief money federal relief money so 
We had pulled that out last year just to illustrate what the true operations were. But when you look at the revenues of 102 million, expenses of 85 million for the fiscal year under 23, resulted increase of 17 million. And when you compare it to those adjusted lines for the operations, it still resulted in an increase in that position, but that shrinks to a $7 million increase. If you were to focus in on the more operating activities and exclude those non-cash items. One thing to pull from this slide is over the course of the five years, this is the first time you've had an increase in that position, at least in the recent years presented here, you've been looking at operating decreases to fund balance or to net position. So 2023 really was a turning point as far as financial performance for the college. So on the next slide, I think you probably noticed the activity trailing down in a declining fashion for 2023 compared to prior years. And on the revenue side, it's almost wholly attributed to the decrease in federal relief funding compared to the prior year. So overall revenues went down 25.1 million and you have federal grants and contracts went down 25.0 million. So that explains it right there, no relief money and the decreased tuition assistance that comes along with that. On the expense side, total expenses went down a little over $33 million. And that came across two main reasons in three areas. And the first is your scholarship expenses. This is going to correlate with the relief funding. In past years, the college had extra funding coming through the doors. So that meant you were able to send it out by way of extra scholarship money. That's down 13 million from the last year. And then the last two, salaries and wages and employee benefits are primarily the result and is illustrating the efforts that the college put forth to control spending and had offered and was forced to do some staffing reductions over the course of the last two years. Fiscal year 2023 was the first full year of 12 months experiencing the savings from that reduction in staff. So you saw nearly a $10 million decrease in salaries and wages and also a decrease in the corresponding employee benefits that go along with those employees. So I will hand it off to Charles, who's going to finish up the last few slides. Charles, I'll take care of that. We'll get through the slides. Thanks, Carl. Another way to look at how the college did financially is there's different ways. One is to look at the cash position and the other one is to look at what's considered unrestricted fund balance. So we mentioned and we looked at the line chart that talked about revenues and expenses. And we have the solid lines that deal with total revenues and total expenses. And we have the dotted lines that deal with kind of the adjusted lines that break out the non-cash change in estimates transactions. But here we're going to focus on a more current view, budget basis view by focusing on unrestricted fund balance and here cash position. So this case leading up to 2020, there was some annual trends that were going kind of downward trends leading up to the most, the lowest level of cash that's been had in the last several years at $19.3 million in 2020. Of course, that's a result of over 20 years of enrollment declines for SUNY data, but also the pandemic hitting right in 2020. And now leading up to 2023, you see 2021 and 2022, there is some increase in cash levels, but that was really directly related to the CARES Act and the American Rescue Plan aid that came in. So although over two years from 2020 to 2022, your cash went up by $12 million, that was also part of $23 million of unrestricted federal aid that came in. So the net increase in cash from 2020 to 2022 is kind of misleading considering the one-time revenues that came in. But the important note to make here is that 2023, considering that no more federal aid was available, cash increase on a one-year level by $11 million. And that's really just due to the measures that have been taken by the board to 
to control the cost and the staffing and optimize some programming levels. So strong, strong, strong cash position in 2023, considering federal aid um, was no longer available. And then uh, another slide we'd like to include here is um, the fund balance. So what's your operating expenses and your operating revenues in your budget and what's reported in the annual report to SUNY, um, you get to reach the bottom line there, your current unrestricted fund balance level, which we start off with the financial statement net position of, again, deficit of $183 million, which is made up primarily with that second number there, the, the gas fee 75, which is your other post appointment benefits. Um, but when, once you, re, you remove all your non-cash transactions and your long-term um, benefits and estimates, you get to your current unrestricted fund balance level of $24.4 million. Um, when you compare that to the college's fund balance policy that requires <coughs> strikes to maintain two months worth of operating expenses, that's about 16.67%. This year, you're falling at, with your $24.4 million of unrestricted fund balance, you're above your fund balance policy at 25%, which is the first time you exceeded your fund balance policy in the last five years. Um, so again, another strong showing highlight <laughs> when we focus on the current view, your fund balance view, and how the, the measures um, have impacted your cash and your fund balance. And observations, um, we'll take questions here, but before I go and ask questions, uh, we continue to, in to include a comment in the management letter as far as economic outlook uh, into the future. There continues to be inherent challenges across the state, SUNY schools, and more specifically community college with, as I said before, over 20 years of enrollment decline. Um, of course, the college took some uh, as we talked about, some some very timely measures um, to optimize the pro again programming levels, um, remove some low enrollment programs, and emphasize the the bigger ones, um, and of course staffing levels. Um, and so, with those actions, and with um, the results of the federal aid uh, that came in, um, operating expenses for 2023 decreased $20.3 million. And again, it led to the first time in five years that your current unrestricted fund balance went over the college's fund balance policy. And so really the comment is um, action was taken, positive action was taken. It led to positive results in 2023 with cash levels um, with your, and fund balance. Uh, but looking into the future, um, th those challenges continue to exist, the enrollment being the biggest one. And so it's, it's just a matter of continuing to oversee your budgets, your spending, and, and monitor the, the types of revenues that are going to come in with federal aid not being available anymore. Okay. Thanks, Charles. So that's, that's the, everything we wanted to include in today's presentation. Um, we do, if anybody has any questions, be happy to answer them. We did take care of a, a bunch a couple weeks ago. And before questions, just to give you an update of where it stands right now, um, we're, in, we're in a final draft form. We're ready to release. However, it's a similar situation to the past couple of years, I believe, where um, the ECC Foundation is a separate entity, but their financial statements are presented within the college's report. And because of that, their financials need to be released before they can be included in the college's release report. So they currently have not released final. So we're sort of waiting, waiting for the word. When the, once they release, um, we'll probably tap on Arda and say, "Are we also ready to go?" Um, we're in the position to release. And before I let it go, I do want to just give compliments to Arda and her staff. Um, Dr. In particular, was a great help this year. Um, we've noticed improvements. We know that there's been a lot, a lot of change over the past few years, and that's a lot to endure um, and overcome as far as going through an audit on top of taking care of your day-to-day -day and whatever projects might be going on. So just appreciate the effort and the coordination from the college's staff this year. 
Carl and Charles, thank you very much for that uh, report and for the report at the Budget Committee a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there are three trustees who are on the Budget Committee. Ken Cruley chairs the committee, Len Lenahan and I. Uh, from my and I'll go to each of those two gentlemen first to see their comments on what was just said and what was reported two weeks ago. But from my perspective, a uh, couple comments. One, excellent job uh, from the Dresher and Malecki folks. Uh, as I went through the financial statements carefully, as I do every year, and the notes in particular, I found myself saying on a consistent basis, this lines up with my general sense of how things are going. And this is consistent with my understanding of any number of aspects regarding the college. And I never had that moment where, wait a minute, that seems off. And so I, I just a good, solid job. Also, I think the richness of your notes, with footnotes, very much appreciated. For fellow trustees, the reading we get every month is important to do before the board meeting. But I would say this package for this meeting is the most important in the year. Because if you read the financial statements as presented, and in particular the footnotes, you will gain a sense of understanding of the college's operations that you cannot gain in any other way. Uh, it's almost completely covered, everything we do with the teacher's retirement system, with OPEB, the, the, the uh, overhang we have for employee benefits and retirement, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the relationship with state aid uh, and our county partner, everything is covered in these notes. To understand this college, especially as a trustee, this is great reading. So thank you for giving us that material, and I encourage all my fellow trustees to really drill down on this. Uh, Ken, from the budget chair perspective, please. Yeah, uh, Jeff, I, I agree with what you're saying. It shows uh, the uh, college is being well managed. Uh, finances are in, in good shape. It always wasn't that way, uh, yeah, but it is now, and that's to the cr to credit of everybody here, including Arda and their staff. Uh, I also point out uh, the, uh, the audit shows uh, no material weaknesses identified, no significant uh, deficiencies identified, no findings, which is meaning that it's basically a clean audit that shows that everything is in order, and that's, that's a very important factor. The only other th comment I would make is that it, we have a, uh, an issue that we probably need to address. Uh, we have a, a policy that says that uh, that sets uh, the goals for fund balance uh, at least two months. Uh, and uh, we're well past that. We're actually past three months right now. And there are procedures in the college, uh, the college policies uh, about what needs to be done as far as when the, the school has exceeded the, uh, the fund balance. Uh, and, and we need to take note of that, and as we prepare the budget, we, we should be uh, reviewing that because there, it's, a, it's a nice issue to have, uh, frankly, but it, it is something that we need to, to address. And of course, you, to that comment, you have to consider your budget position not just in the current year, but in the years coming. You've made that point a number of times sitting in that chair, so we will be taking that up as a full group of trustees at the next budget committee meeting in about a week or two weeks and uh, we'll be talking further about the budget next full meeting of the board and of course passing it on to the legislature. Len, your thoughts from what you heard from our auditors? Well, I'd like, yeah, I was present for the uh, presentation two weeks ago and I agreed that, um, you know, these are, these are good numbers and obviously the two major events that have affected us over the last couple of years is one, the loss of federal funding, but at the same time the right sizing of the college uh, over the past couple of years that helped us put us in this in this strong position with our foot balance. Um, but as in everything else, we have to continue to monitor it and um, you know pay close attention to developments, particularly when we finally get through this year's uh, state budget, which um, hopefully it may yield some results for us. So, good job. I mentioned statements in our reading. The other very good piece of reading in this month's materials was the report on the one house budget bills from the Senate and the Assembly, which are not law. They have not been agreed to. They don't even have to be balanced. But it does give you a sense of where things may be going at the state level as we approach, as we move from the executive budget stage in February to the final enacted budget in early April, hopefully. All right, any further comments? Other trustees, any questions or comments before we move on? 
guess. All right. I was going to say the kind yeah. of retains we did that like have like a student module. Um, I don't know if we had lawmakers in the meeting, but we did like discuss the money that they were going to approve for, um, I guess, I don't know if it's like 97 million, I want to say, or something like that. There's 75 million that's common. So we've got some grants and some unspecified okay. money. So things are looking pretty good at the state. We'll talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. as we as we go through. Uh, especially, I'm going to ask Len to just give his latest insights into what's going on at the state level. Uh, all set? Okay. Okay. <coughs> Thanks again, uh, Carl and Charles. Thanks, we appreciate everybody. your fine work. Bye -bye. Take care. Thank you. Next, we'll move uh, through our typical committee <coughs> items for approval. Uh, we have our budget audit and facilities chair, Ken Crooley, to take up two items for approval discussed at the budget committee. The, uh, the first one is uh, the renewal of our uh, program with AAA for a driver ed program. Uh, it assists uh, uh, hundreds of uh, students who are getting instructed on how to drive, and it's also bringing in with the college about $29,000 a year. Uh, it's worked successfully over the years, and uh, this is just a, a uh, action to continue that program. The, uh, the second item, the disposal of the materials, it's uh, a, a, about 11 <coughs> old vehicles, uh, mostly at the South Campus, one here, one in uh, City Campus, that have uh, done their duty, and it's time to move on, and so the, this is disposing them of those vehicles. And so I, I, I would uh, make a motion to approve uh, both of these items. Second? Second. Any discussion or questions? If not, all in favor, say aye to the approval of these two items. Aye. aye. <coughs> Any opposed? They are approved. Thank you, Ken. Uh, we now have, let's see, um, curriculum, student success, and diversity, Candace, we have one agreement in your purview to approve. Yes. Or to discuss. Yes. So we had a meeting um, in February to discuss this item. It is an agreement with Ellicottville High School. Um, it's Eric. Mm -hmm. And Eric, do you want to just give? I, I will say it is Eric is coming up that we did have a brief discussion of this during that meeting, um, and some interesting thoughts were raised around data, uh, pre-agreement and post-agreement. So Eric's and if you could like touch on that very briefly. And just geographically, where this high school is, is located in terms of um, you know, the county and the changes that we've seen. Yes, great. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to continue to expand our offerings uh, to an additional high school here with El Kidville um, High School. Um, as we are committed to, within our strategic plan, um, focused on data collection, uh, as Justin Morrison has highlighted. Uh, looking at then how we not only then serve those students within the high school by offering this opportunity for them to earn college credit, but looking at those matriculation rates as well. Um, and so offering these opportunities throughout the entire Western New York region uh, as we're able to do so. Now that Ellicottville's in Cattaraugus County, so not in Erie County. What, what their alternative would be to go to Jamestown Community so, College? Yeah, or? so the service area um, regions, um, are yes defined by the, the county lines as you have identified. Um, in counties that do not have a specific community college, um, there are districts that then this is able to help support. Okay. All right, any questions for Erickson or for Candace about this matter? And your committee suggests yes. Yes, passing we did. this. Okay. We did suggest to pass it on for the Make a motion board. in favor? So I'll make a, a motion in favor. And second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 We, Aye. Will we will pass that. Thank you, Erickson. We have a couple of interesting uh, uh, items on the policy and governance front with Mel Baker. Um, Want to brief us on that or, or ask for assistance on that? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, the academic, we discussed, uh, of course, um, the procurement policy, but I'll start with the academic forgiveness policy. Um, essentially, there is a policy coming forward that is aligned with uh, what many other schools are doing to uh, provide academic forgiveness for students. This will allow them to come in. This will help us with enrollment. Um, this will allow students who uh, originally um, were not able to participate in the program who had less than a 2.5. Um, it would be lowered to a 2.0 so that they could essentially 
come back in with a with a clean slate to to the school and kind of and, and essentially start over. Um, so it's definitely a great opportunity, and we definitely would like to move this forward. However, there's some um, concerns about how these students are supported throughout the um, when they get uh, when they get the academic when they're approved for academic forgiveness. <coughs> Um, and so the issue is that uh, in times past, uh, some of the students, not all the students, finish uh, the programming, and there's not an infrastructure in place to um, see the highest or the best outcomes for these students. So I am recommending, based on the uh, discussion that we had in the policy, co policy committee, that we approve this uh, policy contingent upon these support structures being put into place so that when, when students uh, get into the program that they are fully supported, that, um, that they do have uh, knowledge of you know, the courses that they're going to take, how it impacts their financial aid, because um, we don't want them to come in and take a bunch of courses and uh, you know, decide that they want to continue on and there's no more financial aid or even finish because they don't have the support that they need. So based on our discussion, I'm recommending that we approve the policy but contingent upon building an infrastructure to better support these students. Um, Dr. Sagai, what question I have in response to that is I'm generally in favor of it, but would we then, would the policy then be in place now or would it be deferred until sometime when we have determined that those support things are in place? It would be deferred because one of the things that we have to be mindful is that our catalog speaks to this current policy um, and our catalog will not be published until July uh, of this year. So it is important that students who are coming in within the current catalog are coming on this, uh, the current policy that we have. So it's important that we, uh, we do that and align with that. Uh, the other thing, I think part of the infrastructure is really working through uh, Workday, and we have a an, an, um, uh, great team that's working through that, so we're able to really do that and manage that well. So right now, um, this policy would have to be contingent on all of those things being in place. So we're not making this the law of the land now, but we're Can't. giving our approval to the notion of it coming in. How would it be measured that we're at the point where the policy comes into place? Do you have a sense of that? Yes, so I think part of the, the conversation was to have it in our next uh, committee, policy committee meeting, so we will have an update for that committee to be able to say, okay, this is where we're moving. But again, we have to be mindful until July. Uh, that's when the college publishes the catalog and so uh, it won't be in effect until then. Do you picture it coming back to the full board for some sort of final blessing? Absolutely. At that time? Yes. Okay. So this is to give a preliminary approval to move forward to put the structures in place with a general acknowledgement that this is a good thing to do. And, and in, if I may, in addition to that, I think this policy also impacts other academic policy. So we want to be consistent with those policy as it relates to the GPA. So in one document, the GPA says 2.5, and another one. So we want to make sure we align this policy with other academic policy to ensure that we are being consistent. How, what's been the history with the faculty or the, the, the people at the college at Adrian and others who are in charge of academic standards and or our uh, accreditation situation? Is, is this something consistent with so this the came faculty's by, wishes? So this came by a committee, um, uh, an academic standing committee, which is under the Senate. So the faculty and staff had full uh, sort of engagement in this, but I think there's a further discussion we have to have. So this is under the Senate uh, committee. And, and are there any concerns from an accreditation point of view if we adopt a policy like this? No, I think what we have to do is be consistent with it and make sure that we verify. So I think this will give us an opportunity to do so. Okay. Uh, other questions or comments the only before question motion? Because I, um, I actually I use academic, food, so that's why I'm kind of so interested in this. Um, does it apply to students that are currently here? Because isn't it a separate type of academic? Because say if you did fail a class a semester, say uh, English. You got an F spring. If you go, if you take it again in the fall, technically, if you do better, that grade of the F in the spring won't be there. So is that kind of how that is, or academic just gives you a whole clean new slate, even though you kind of went to the college? So, 
I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm not going to push you. No, no, sure please you do. Know no, 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 go ahead, please. Um, so for my understanding, mm -hmm. this particular policy is for students who are no longer at the school. school. Yes, it's right. a fresh start. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's essentially a fresh start. And so um, I'm very, like, uh, I'm very supportive of it because number one, it will support our enrollment. So essentially, students cannot come back if without this policy in place. Or if they do come back, they're dragged down by their prior grades, right? I, That's the problem? I have, as I just, I'm sorry, I have classmates in the nursing program now, and she has to retake um, AMP over, over that simple fact of um, her previous grades from her class. So, you know, I think that is a benefit to people who are trying to come into this. Community. <laughs> So, I do have a, a clarifying question, if, if I could. Just looking at the policy, it says um, it would apply to students who were dismissed from ECC. So is this limited to those students who were officially dismissed because of their grades? So in other words, if a student sort of stopped coming on their own accord because they had bad grades, would they be able to take advantage of this program, of this policy? In part, yes, yeah. but that's where I think we have to mindful of the the other policy to make sure that it's being consistent. Okay. So that's why I think this is into a lot of the questions uh, that's being brought. I think we need to take a little bit more time to really, um, you know, um, the, um, sort of uh, split some of these things and make sure that we're very clear. And then the the important piece uh, uh, on this is to really make sure that we're communicating to the students very clear mm -hmm. about what this is and how they could take advantage of it. So I think we have an opportunity to do this a little bit, uh, you know, uh, work on it so that it's easily understood and it's not confusing. It's not a way to fix one class. It's it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, a hold, broad it's a restart. Yeah. Re mm -hmm. Uh, Kathy, do you have any perspective to add? I, I know you're engaged on this question. <coughs> I think everyone's covered it very well. Okay. And just to, to, so is it going to be an academic probationary as well? So they'll kind of be like, you have to do this, with, you know, to make sure they're on track. So, so part of this, in addition mm -hmm. to this, I think this is um, a bigger conversation with our advisement model mm -hmm. that we're working on. Mm -hmm. Because part of this is that how do we, when students come to the college, that we're advising them appropriately. And then we all know that students may stop out because life happened, but we also have to talk about how do we make sure that students are exiting appropriately. So we do not have an exit process for our students because we just didn't put that part of the plan. So part of the plan is to do that, but the first question is how do we, or what kind of model do we have as it relates to academic advisement so that the students are educated, we are educated, and then our policy uh, aligns with what we're doing as a, uh, as a way to promote success for our students. So uh, a lot of work we have to do. All right, so I think what Mel has outlined is an approval of the general concept here, mm -hmm. uh, subject to some additional work that needs to be done yes. before this actually comes online, yes. mm -hmm. right? Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so a motion to that effect then? Right, so motion to, and so I just had a quick question. Um, when we, because uh, uh, Chair, um, uh, uh, Chair Stone, one of the things that you mentioned that before this goes into place, it'll come back to the board for blessings. I'm, I guess my concern is, why are we putting a policy board that then has to come back? Like, I just feel like that that's a lot more stuff. I mean, it, I mean, unless you think it should, because one of the challenges is in our last conversation, I know, Kathy, you're in charge of like the catalog and like it's a time issue mm -hmm. so if we have to put it back and then bring it back to the board i mean if we agree with it we agree with it i mean we we have the leadership of our president the guidance of kathy's support i mean do we need to do the back well, my board? only my only thought and that was that if, if we just leave it this way there it will not necessarily be clear when this really comes into place unless we say it's going to be a motion of the uh, of the committee mm -hmm. that triggers it going into place Right now we're saying we like it, but it still needs some work or mm -hmm. it needs some additional support before it goes online. Um, when do we measure that that support has really been given? Um, I, I think the board is quite supportive of this, so I don't think the idea would necessarily take much time to approve it again, unless we wanted to say let's leave it in the hands of the committee and when they deem the necessary supports to be in place, it becomes live. I think we could pass that motion if you're more comfortable with that. I mean, I would defer to, to Adrian, Kathy, and Dr. Sagai. Mm -hmm. So, Kathy? So, from an accreditation standpoint, my concern would be that it's not necessary. Do you need to have a microphone? No. Uh, yeah. um, you check those questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, from, from an 
accreditation standpoint, I think Dr. Sakai's um, mention of a policy that has different numbers in it, mentioned a 2.5, these really should align with one another so that we're not misrepresenting the, the opportunities for our students. So I think um, with that, I would encourage us to have both policies presented at the same time to you so we know that they're in alignment and we're not um, representing the college in any way that could be representing us unethically. So if I may, so I think that the, if, if, if it's an agreement that we bring it back to the committee um, okay. and have the committee look and do the work uh, and then bring it back here uh, in time for the catalog. So I think we have enough time to you do You want that. us to table it today yes, then? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Motion to table? Motion to table. Yes. Can I have a motion to table? But with an endorsement of the general counsel. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll second. second. All, right. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> Very good. All right. Good discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Procurement policy? Uh, so the procurement policy is something that we've been talking about for quite some time. Um, and it just, it just makes things so much easier, so much cleaner. I mean, I'm all for not having to go through, as you could probably tell, like 10 different approval processes before we move forward. Um, and so we uh, agreed to put forth the procurement policy. I mean, do we need more discussion on it? It's basically so that things, um, anything, uh, initially it was like $50,000 was the amount that we had to um, get something approved. Uh, $50,000 is- so From this, the ledge. Right, from yeah. the legislator. Um, $50,000, and th that's been in place for a very, very, very long time. The federal government, the state government, um, several entities have removed that because a college that, I mean, we heard those numbers, we have a hundred million dollar budget. Can you imagine a 50, fat, like trying to get something approved for $50,000 every single time? So we've had the discussion with the board, we've had the discussion with the policy um, committee. I would like to make a motion to um, uh, move forward with the procurement policy that makes it so that the decisions can basically take place in house and we don't have to put anything to the ledge um, for an approval for something over $50,000. We've always had a procurement policy, and it's a lengthy one, and it tends to repeat the various sections of New York State law that govern public entities such as ourselves buying or acquiring goods or services. And we're governed by lots of laws in that area, bidding, procurement RFP rules, and we understand those, and those are abided by every day by the college. But it's all in this policy. The difference is we had a special provision that said if a matter is over $50,000 individually or in the aggregate, we had to go to Erie County Legislature for approval of that, as Mel said. Uh, where that came from, I think some of the, the, the grayer heads at the table may remember the red-green budget back in the day. There was a control board in Erie County and there was much more stricture on how exactly anything involved with Erie County spent money, including our college. Uh, there was a local law at the time. Uh, we've had some research done by the uh, county, the county legal department about this. There was a local law, Ken, I think, or maybe even remembers it, that said that this is necessary, and the control board imposed this. But that law has long since gone by the, the wayside as the county's uh, imp finances are vastly improved and way different from the mid-2005 or six, whenever that, that budget occurred. Um, so our policy really never caught up with the new reality, and now we're making it caught up with that. Ken or Len, uh, just anything to add, or have I mischaracterized that at all? I think, no, I think yeah, we, go ahead, Ken. I, I think it was left over from the control board. I, I was on the board when we informed right. the Right, good, good experience. <laughs> and then the county had to submit everything over $50,000 to the control board, not just the college things. Okay. And so it never got cleaned up after. This is a cleanup thing. By the way, we're supposed to review this procurement policy every spring, and so we're, t we're taking that policy to heart and doing that. So this is uh, essentially a similar policy to what we've always had, but with this one significant difference that Mel outlined. Uh, motion to approve? May I have a motion to approve? Second. Yeah. Uh, any further questions or comments? I would just, I just think. Oh, oh, yeah. Go ahead, Liz. This is just, just, just a quick comment. Uh, at one point, this was down to we had to go for approval over thirty thousand dollars. I remember it was about seven, eight years, years ago. I went over and talked to Mark Polakars, and we actually had to duke it out to get it up to fifty. But I think this is a great uh, opportunity to to move away from that policy, 
as uh, the chairman has said, our finances are better in the county, they're better at the, at the college. And I think, we, you know, this is a healthy uh, move forward. Carrie, you would have thought? I was, I was just, in gen this is more in general. I just think it would be helpful if when we're getting the materials and reviewing it, um, if we got sort of like a, if it's a policy change or a renewed agreement, if it was more of like a red line a red from line, the yeah. old one, because okay. I think it would just, a lot of times when I'm reading through the materials to prepare for the meeting, I'm trying to figure out what has changed yeah, from the last one. Mm -hmm. And I just think it would maybe be more, it would just be helpful going, I've been, I thought that a few times and never said it, so I just wanted to say it now yeah. so that I would um, get it I out there. Is, <laughs> I, think, I think it's fair to say that the only significant or maybe the only change to the policy, which is largely a repetition of state law, is this removal of yes. this significant thing, right? And uh -huh. to Carrie's point, I think redlining, if something's mentioned in the policy about the red line detached, um, but there's no red line attached, so yeah, that's, that's probably what's triggering here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that is important. Certainly very, very helpful for the trustees. Just easier to digest, I think. No question. Uh, that being said, I was glad to kind of look at all those rules again, just to remind myself of what applies to us. Yeah. yeah but point taken. Your motion is on the floor. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That is approved. Thank you. Thank you for the work on that, Mel. Thank you. I think we might have talked about it for maybe 30 times. <laughs> it's been a long, long discussion. <laughs> uh, we have the human resources agenda. Uh, Amanda Lau is not here. Uh, just to see if we, we do have a motion. Let's look at page 42. We got Maureen. Oh, and Maureen helping us? Okay. Yes, James. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Uh, the two items that we have uh, at the top are that we have two welcoming two new SES hires. One is a part time confidential assistant. That would be replacing Kelly Lapiana as the board assistant. And it's a part time confidential assistant, um, Diane McLaughlin. So she's accepted the position. And Diane's position is part-time where Kelly was full-time, so we've, we've gone down on that, which I think is fine. And then the other one is uh, the position of Vice President of Administration, and that is James Blackwell. And he accepted the position. He'll start um, April 22nd. This would be a good time to thank Gail uh, for the work that you've been doing while we've mm -hmm. posted this position uh, for the board. Thank you, Gail. I'll continue to assist. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sagai, you want to comment? The, the, again, we're being very mindful uh, to make sure that we balance who um, we're bringing into the college, and so these two positions will help the college move forward, particularly the um, vice president of administration is going to be high level to really manage a lot of the things that we're dealing with uh, and have an oversight and work with the current senior leadership to move the college forward. So I'm excited about bringing these two uh, individuals to continue to move the college forward. Any hesitation in recommending this? Absolutely not. <laughs> no hesitation. We worked with this. Okay. Again. Yes. Any questions? And then a motion in favor uh, at, at the Board of Trustees level to approve these two SES hires as described. So moved. Thank you. And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, opposed? Aye. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> <clears throat> I have an announcement that, uh, with Amanda not being here, uh, go ahead. I, I just was going to ask, there's a second section on the human resources agenda. Did we need to do anything? With I don't it? think that we do because that's okay. not SES. Okay, okay, just checking. Yeah. Thank you. Thought, good thought, though. Mm -hmm. uh, just chair, a letter to me here uh, from Talent. Uh, chair Stone, as President Sagai discussed with you, she and Trustee Lau met and Trustee Lau approved the president moving forward with the hiring of a chief diversity officer and a director of human resources. Want to elaborate? Yes, sure. So the um, director of human resources, as you know, Maureen has been a wonderful asset to the college as an interim director, but I know she has decided and I certainly respect uh, and appreciate. I got scared when she gave me the letter. I thought she was leaving, so I didn't even read it. Uh, she is staying. She is going back into her uh, responsibility to oversee payroll. She's doing that now as well, uh, so I'm grateful and thank her officially for all the hard work and continues to move our HR forward. Um, and so it is important that we uh, replace that position, and so that will be um, 
helpful for the college to move forward. Um, with respect to the uh, chief diversity officer, uh, I did have one of my report I was going to mention, uh, had a, uh, a chance to meet with the uh, vice chancellor of diversity and equity at SUNY. Uh, this is something that the SUNY certainly recommend highly that we have that. I certainly see a, a need and, and make sure that we really uh, position the chief diversity officer position at the college. I know in the past it was part of HR. Uh, it is not going to be part of HR. It is going to be part of the college uh, and really looking at it holistically to make sure that the college is really committed as our mission and vision states that we are really committed to make sure that we are um, you know, investing in this position. So uh, with the approval of the board, uh, I think this, uh, these two positions are critical to, again, moving the college forward. This is an important subject. Mel has raised this, mm -hmm. the, the need to have this position be separated from the traditional approach of attaching this to the HR title. Uh, I went to a DEI program last week sponsored by the uh, Western New York Educational Services Council and one of the points made was how that can really be a negative reinforcing loop. You put this DEI function with human resources mm -hmm. and it becomes nothing more than a place where people go with complaints about aggrieved treatment in the workforce. There's no vision in terms of what this position really can do and, and infusing the entire college with the notion. So uh, I thought that was interesting because I've heard the same comment from more than one trustee mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. from our senior leadership here. So that, that's important. What are you, are we asking, uh, we don't to have a specific person. This no, is no, to, this is just to, to post the position. Letting you know that you're posting this. Yes. This is yes. more of an informational item then for us. But, for, for the board to right. um, um, give us the okay to do that. Yeah, um, we'll take a motion to that then, sure. Thank you. I'll make a motion. And second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We approve the notion Aye. of moving Thank forward with posting these two separate positions. Correct. Thank okay. you. All right. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to colleagues of mine who have been people of color and uh, human resources, they are hired to be human resources, and then the next day they said, congratulations, you're also the chief direct, uh, diversity officer with absolutely no additional compensation whatsoever, and that's just indicative of what a lot of marginalized communities have experienced. So I think that this is huge. And I'm gonna stop talking because I know Cameron has a test to study for. That's right. That's right. I, I do. I have my nursing entrance exam. We can <laughs> hurry up. Oh, right. Right. Yes, we can move forward. Right. Oh my God, every practice test is like four hours long. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I've never sat in a test for this long. We have taken our, our formal steps that we need to take. We do, for the knowledge of the group and anyone online, we are going to have an executive session today and take up a couple of items. Um, I wouldn't say it's totally brief, but I don't think it'll be exceptionally long either. Cam, I don't know when you need to uh, leave. I think we have do you guys all but one. We have, a, have a, a continuing quorum if you do have to leave. I would, I would appreciate because I do have another <laughs> meeting. I have another meeting at 2 o'clock. Would o you like so to I give your student report before you leave? Um, yeah, I guess I'll tell you guys. I mean, we really, SGA has kind of been in a, I guess you can say a little halt. I wouldn't say we've came to a complete stop, but you know, things, you know, the semester gets busy for a lot of students, so, um, but for the month we've had at South, we had a women's history event. Um, they had caterings uh, with Rock, uh, I think it's called Rocco's, I guess. I'm not too sure what kind of food that is, um, but I heard it was really good. <laughs> Um, and then North, they were uh, just finished like celebrating um, their Black History event as well. And then also they have a women's uh, self-defense training course, um, which we kind of been speaking on because I like I know we had a couple in at City, um, so which is good to see. Um, and then I know at City Campus we had um, Fredonia trip. Uh, we took a group of students to Fredonia and we got to visit. Um, we actually got to meet with the president. Um, and it was really just like a, it was a job fair kind of event, and it was a lot of uh, different organizations from police training, STEM careers, um, you name it, just, and I, I wanna say we're kind of having something similar in April, mm -hmm. so, um, but it's just nice to see the other college campuses um, and see what they got going on. Um, I'm just trying to pull up my, I should have my notes ready. Um, so, and then, like I was saying earlier too, last week I had a module with some the New York Community College trustee 
Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Andreas. Mm -hmm. um, he's the advocate. Yeah, he's an yeah, he's the advocate. Um, and we also I don't I can't remember if there were lawmakers. I don't I wasn't too big on it. Like I said, they're trying to pass that budget mm -hmm. um, because we know community colleges are severely underfunded, especially at the operating cost level. Um, we need that money. And then the short term Pell Grant programs for students who do want to come here and get electrician, carpentry, or something like that, because um, Pell doesn't cover that stuff. Um, and I know we've been screaming in lawmakers' ears because they're they're tired of us. But it's students are who they want to hear from. Um, okay. So, Cam, is that Andreas Merletti? Yes, yes, yeah. it is. Yes, I'm, I'm on some other groups with him. Oh, he's, you are. He's a dynamo. He, he is. He's a really awesome. I, love I just him met with him last is. night. As a matter of fact. Um, and then, as I'm pretty sure everybody knows too, we also collaborated with um, the Eclipse. So we got a bunch of glasses, we got stuff for the students, we got uh, shirts, uh, we gave them Oreos and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, we <laughs> make sure everybody's safe. And Sunny D, we kind of keep a little eclipse. Um, Sunny um, D. Yeah. Good, thank you. But that's all it is. Yeah. You're doing thank a you. great job, Cam. All right. Well, good luck with your exam. Good well, yeah. yes. And everything else was. So. Cheers. Um, we'll hear more I definitely that. that funding. I'm gonna stay on that because I am trying to move forward <laughs> with that and get make sure we secure that for especially for That's ECC. Right. So, good deal. Right. <laughs> <You're good laughs> funding. Yes. Hmm. Well, you just make your escape whenever you need to. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ken. Yes. Uh, we'll move to informational items. Ken, you've got a, the typical array there. You want to walk yeah. us through? The, the, the first two, of course, we've already covered concerning the audit. Uh, the uh, the third is the, uh, the dashboard uh, financial dashboard update. Uh, Arda, any uh, comments? Uh, I really don't have many comments. Um, I think I just want to take a moment. I know the auditors are not here. It's an absolute pleasure working with them. They actually covered the college's financial stance. You know we're doing well this year. Also. Um, the fund balance is secure, um, but if we consider the upcoming years, we have to be also cautious, uh, not to say that these reserves will last, you know, as our costs continue to increase while, in it, while, while our enrollment keeps declining, so. Thank you. That's it, but I think there's gonna be, not I think, I know for sure we're gonna have a lot of budget discussions come April 11th, um, so I'm looking forward to that. Arna, thanks for your work on, on with the auditors. Uh, they were very complimentary, and that's great. And we joined them in that. And also for the work I know you're doing now on the budget. It's a busy season for you, and we appreciate your work. Thank you very much. I have a great team. That's all I can say. <laughs> thanks. Uh, well, before you sit down, uh, okay, the uh, <laughs> labor management health, uh, any, anything particular? <coughs> uh, the overall performance is doing well, however, um, with, um, as far as our books go, each fiscal year, um, that doesn't really represent how much credit we're gonna get at August 31st. It just shows like as part of this big consortium how well we're performing compared to other entities. But come August 31st, we do this giant reconciliation of our health and dental claims. So not necessarily doesn't present what we actually pay, pay in benefits each fiscal year. Um, so, that's that. Thank you. All right. I'm trying to think what else I could say. Yeah, so the next couple so the items relate to. That with uh, I'm sorry. I'm sure. with the only thing with health and dental is it's based on performance. Our books are technically based on performance. If someone uses, if our employees use the health insurance more this fiscal year, then we adjust those claims at year end. So they reflect the true cost that it costs the college each fiscal year, and the range could vary between 42 and 48 percent of our total salaries that we pay on benefits. And it's not just the benefit portion doesn't really include just health and dental. It also includes additional uh, costs like PRS, CRS, all, all these other things that the college pays for on behalf of the employees. Thank you. Uh, the next couple items relate to Paul's work. Uh, the facilities, rentals, we had about $30,000 of income coming in the last month or so. Uh, the supply report, there wasn't, uh, supplier report, nothing particularly to note, Paul? No, nothing crazy. Any? Just routine type stuff, repaying software licenses or. 
Any uh, comments about capital items that we need to know about? No, we're just getting going. We're kind of working out our, our lifting schedule for the, the Sky Lake is scheduled to start at the beginning of April. And we're just working on the lifting schedule, where the crane's going to sit, uh, trying to figure out what whether it's the penthouse and the fifth floor need to be vacated or the fourth and fifth for the few hours the crane's on site. So just getting busy. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the next item about the executive uh, budget and one house bills, we, we should note that they've moved past the one house bills. We're now into the two women and one man in a room. <laughs> it used to be three men in a room. Right. Uh, discussions between the governor and the legislative leaders. So, whatever was in the one house bills is beyond anything anybody here is going to influence. So, uh, we'll, I, they're, they're talking about passing a budget next week, and we'll we'll have the results then of what the what the reality is of all that stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and it was interesting to note the one house bills don't need to be balanced. I I have not known that. Uh, Len, anything to add on the state budget picture? No, I think uh, Ken summed it up uh, pretty well. I'd be a little surprised if it's done by next week, but uh, my sources are telling me probably in the middle of, uh, or maybe the week of April 8th, something like that. Okay. The, uh, the last item was just the minutes of our, our um, committee meeting. Very good. Thank you, Ken. All those informational items are accepted. Uh, it's Candace, curriculum, student success, and diversity informational items. Yes. So, um, in addition to the item that we voted on, there are uh, three other, or, I'm sorry, two other items. One is an articulation agreement with Global Concepts, and the other is a um, an MOA, uh, MOU rather, with UB for uh, a pathway program that is actually quite, uh, well, both are, are great, the, the second one quite interesting. Eric, can you yeah, give a you. just briefing? Thank you for that introduction. Um, yes, as you highlighted, the first is a articulation agreement with our culinary program um, at Global Charter School, which is a great opportunity to really expand uh, the offerings for students to be able to earn those credits while they come here. Uh, the second is a MOU with the University of Buffalo uh, SUNY, uh, which is an opportunity for students uh, who may not be immediately accepted into the University of Buffalo to find a equal alternative path uh, by being admitted here to ECC. Um, while also working with and strengthening that uh, partnership with the University of Buffalo and their academic programs so that students who complete here at ECC are able then to successfully transfer to the University of Buffalo. So that work has been um, going on for actually the last two years with myself and the two respective uh, counterparts at UB, um, Lee Melvin before he retired and now Christopher Connor in his interim role. Uh, so we have ongoing meetings with their admissions and transfer programs, as well as ongoing conversations with the academic departments, uh, focusing first on our top transfer programs uh, between ECC and the University of Buffalo. So this is a really great opportunity to strengthen that partnership of keeping students within the SUNY system. And these are leadership discretion, not board approval items? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. But just to highlight, I think we heard several students around the room this morning who said that their next you know, yes. intention is, is UB, so mm -hmm. it's just great work by by Eric, by Dr. Mm -hmm. Sagai, and, and both of your respective teams. Thank you. Very good. You. Len, uh, we put you on the budget. Anything on, on the marketing front that you want to discuss? Well, we put off having a meeting, uh, Jeff, until the marketing um, vice president was hired. Now that we're moving in that direction, we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be having a meeting. Else so there? we're gonna we have uh, applicants around 27 applicants. So we're going through the uh, review process. We will be setting up uh, um, um, interviews with those individuals and hopefully to get someone in place. Great. And then Mel from Policy and Governments, we're simply taking your minutes from the last meeting in September. Perry, strategic planning. Anything to report there? Nothing to report there. Amanda is not here. Uh, did I get that separate sheet? Uh, yes, was that, that the was one that you yeah, okay? That was um, we did. We did the personnel transaction report as an informational item. You see the typical uh, changes at page 170. Technology, Carrie. Anything to report? 
We did meet a couple of weeks back on the 14th. Um, we just went through our standing items, which include the updates on Workday and the ERP, um, infrastructure updates, academic user and technology updates, as well as the information security updates. I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we had anything that we no. needed to elevate from there unless there's been something since the meeting? No. 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 Okay. Then that's all. I don't know what our next meeting is. I've got to get back on the... Please do the 11th session. Well, it's yeah. on the, is it on the 11th? No, no we, uh, we decide not to have a meeting. Yeah, it'll be oh. oh, yeah, I, I saw that guy cast. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. I keep forgetting that's that exciting. we're going every other month now. Okay. Uh, moving to, thank you, Carrie, to uh, my report as chair. Uh, for those of you who have been gently ribbing me about the long duration of our Board of Trustees meetings, I've solved the problem. I've had the clock removed. <laughs> 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 I was wondering where it went to. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> March, uh, March 4th, uh, Adiam and I met with uh, our typical RAF building, 16th floor meeting with the county executive and Ben Swanekamp and uh, Josh Pinnell. Continue to be very productive monthly meetings, great dialogue with the county team, uh, and very, very supportive of what we're doing on a lot of fronts. Uh, March 7th, uh, Kathy and Adiam and I went and addressed the majority caucus in the Erie County Legislature. Recall we, we met the minority caucus last month to brief them on the South Campus situation and address any other questions that they have. Again, a very, very positive meeting. Uh, Chair Gilmore, who oversees the committee in charge of us, was there and brokered it, and uh, April Baskin was there. Everybody was there, and it was a great meeting. Uh, thank you, Kathy and Adiam, for both of those presentations. On March 14th, we had a very interesting visit from Dr. Merrill Tisch, who is the chair of the SUNY Board of Trustees. Adiam and I met her in New York City when Adiam was approved. Um, and she, along with Johanna Duncan Poitier and Eunice Lewin, trustee for SUNY overseeing our area, all very supportive of our efforts here at SUNY Erie. And we're all here listening to students and faculty meeting uh, with Dr. Zagai and me and others, and it was really quite a productive, uh, almost a full day, you know, by the time they left. Uh, so that was uh, notable. Uh, on the March 14th, Ken ran a, a good budget audit and facilities committee meeting where the budget was discussed, but I, and I only could join for the last 10 minutes because of the subject I just raised where uh, Merrill Tisch was here. Uh, on, on the 15th, Adiam and I and Adrian and Colleen Quinn attended the Irish Center <laughs> gathering for St. Patrick's Day, which was a tremendous gathering of elected officials here in Western New York and all statewide elected officials, starting with the governor, the comptroller, were here. Um, the, I think uh, the attorney general, Tish James, was here. It was just an incredible array of elected officials at the Irish Center, and we were all there. Um, I mentioned earlier that I attended a DEI uh, presentation uh, on the 26th, just a couple days ago. Um, this was entitled DEI Sharing Successes, and the panelists were folks from Sweet Home Schools and Williamsville Schools, two leaders in, the, in terms of cultural awareness and DEI initiatives at the secondary school level. And they addressed an array of school superintendents, business officials, and others about their successes, and that I shared one of the insights that I, that I got when we in our earlier discussion, but there were a number of others. Um, and I think when we have our new DEI person, uh, I would like you to please remember that I went to this and I can give you some contacts of people that they should be in touch with, particularly the, uh, the lady in charge at Williamsville was seen as kind of a regional leader in this whole area, thought leader programmatic leader, things that she's done and, and others have picked up. Uh, Williamsville uh, person from my DEI program. On the 27th, uh, just yesterday, Adiam and Mark Gollin and I had a good lunch at the uh, North Campus here where we talk, talked about all manners of, of subjects relating to the foundation, uh, the, the, the board chair that, or the board seat that we need to fill over there. Uh, and a number of other issues and the Joan Bozer event and so forth. So very good dialogue. I'll be in frequent meetings with Mark here, especially now that Dr. Sagai is in place and they continue to do some, some good work over there and more to come uh, offline about that. 
Uh, today we'll be taking up the executive session, uh, further uh, discussion of the South Campus situation, and uh, taking steps forward there. The New York State budget is coming. April 18th, uh, Ken and Len, you've been spearheading our, our Joan Bozer event. Could you just comment and encourage attendance at that, please? Uh, yes, plans are going very well. The event will be two weeks from today. Um, we've had very good participation. Um, certainly it's a drive on uh, these next three weeks to remind anybody of the event, encourage everybody to attend, including our, our board of trustees and, and key personnel at the college. And uh, it's just shaping up to be a very um, satisfying uh, event. And, you know, for us to honor somebody uh, well deserving of this recognition, uh, Joan Bozer. So, uh, yeah, we're, the heat is on for the last three weeks, but we think it's going to be a great night. We appreciate and Ade Minaldi, uh, and Gal, and everybody, Bob Germani, who have participated, uh, represented the college with the committee and Joan's family. Um, so yeah, I think, I, I think we're heading into, into, to, to a great night. There's a beautiful invitation here at, 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 at our places mm -hmm. about this in printed form. It, it's terrific. Maybe we can send Len a picture of that or something. If he's... He, he was part of the creation. Oh, was he? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. It looks great. It looks great. <laughs> Last two items. Uh, don't forget the eclipse on the 8th. Uh, just remind the group what we're doing. Are we closing or where are, what so, are we up so to? Definitely we're closing. Um, you'll see in, in my report we have students who are doing a lot of um, artwork. Uh, you met with our art um, club today uh, and the librarians are involved. So it's really a student services and I know some faculty are doing uh, different activities um, later on, but the college is closed for the day. So. And as it should be, it's yes. gonna be wild. We've all been following those events. Uh, commencement May 22nd, trustees, Lock that in in red on your calendar. And that is uh, my report other than to, I, I mentioned to our Islamic and Muslim friends that, um, that we're in the holiest month of Ramadan, but we're also in Holy Week for those in the, of the Christian faith. So mm -hmm. happy Easter to all. Uh, that's my report. Thank you, thank you. Bob? So just uh, we had the trustee and uh, Senate. Uh, Colleen is out sick today, so mm -hmm. I understand she can't make a Senate report unless you have something to add as part of your report. Um, I but don't. Otherwise, um, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Uh, so as you can see, I love pictures. I think it says a lot. Um, so our students participated in the Friend and Feeding uh, Friends. Uh, this is uh, sponsored by our culinary program, so you can see that. Uh, I just mentioned about the clips. Uh, you see the artwork that our students are doing uh, and more to come on that. Uh, and every student have been given the, the, um, the glass as well, so we are supporting our students. Um, I attended, as well as our staff attended, the Men's uh, Empowerment Summit that was sponsored by the uh, mayor at the uh, Northland. So we had an awesome uh, turnout there in terms of just the participation. Uh, it was their first one, and hopefully to participate and be part of that going forward. Uh, college Day was last um, Friday, and our focus was re-engining re our whys uh, to increase students' retention and graduation rate. Uh, our keynote speaker uh, was Dr. Uh, Mark Abraham, the founder and CEO of MEA Consulting. Um, I think so far, and I know a lot of our staff uh, uh, participated that are here, uh, I think was very motivating. I think we got a lot of uh, positive feedback uh, from, uh, from our faculty and staff that attended uh, the event. Um, and then, uh, as you can see, we had, and Jeff mentioned it, in terms of the visit that we got from uh, uh, Trustee uh, Tish. Uh, as you can see, she met with our students and our faculty at the city campus. Uh, our students did show up. Uh, we did uh, uh, try to get as much of student representation from all of our college, from all of our campuses. Uh, so we had over 70 students, and I think it was a little bit overwhelming. Uh, so uh, we did. She did have an opportunity to meet with 20 and plus students, uh, and she's very much wanting to connect with students. So she wanted to meet student by students, and our students uh, did a wonderful job representing. Uh, very diverse in terms of just their background, where they are at the college. Uh, and equally, our faculty also did a wonderful job uh, in terms of really uh, speaking uh, to her about our, um, you know, our curriculum and, and how uh, our students are leaving and where they're going after they graduate from the college. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, this was uh, a sponsor by the mayor, uh, Trailblazer Women in Western New York. 
our, our own uh, Dr. Gonzalez uh, was one of the individuals that were nominated, so I thought it was important that we highlight her. And I know that we have a wonderful and great uh, women uh, here leading the college, including our trustees here. So uh, happy Women's Month. And so you can see Western New York Women Foundation also had their press uh, conference yesterday that I participated uh, in, and we had a, a wonderful opportunity uh, to be part of that. And the Women's Foundation is our, uh, our partner in our mom's program at the college. So uh, honored to be uh, part of that, um, um, that, that press conference. Um, just a couple of things to highlight. Um, I think a lot of uh, uh, Jeff mentioned it, but a couple of things I think I want to take a moment uh, to congratulate our um, uh, Vision Care Technology Program. Uh, we got uh, a six-year accreditation, and it's an excellent work that the team put together. So we did get an official from the commissioner uh, of accreditation that the college is awarded uh, six years uh, for the uh, uh, Vision Care Technology. So uh, great job on that team. I had the opportunity to meet with the executive director of uh, EOC, and this is an opportunity myself and uh, Eric will be working with to, to really how we could collaborate. We are working with them on a grant together, so we are going to be supporting the grant effort, and we'll have more discussion on that. But I think uh, to really talk to EOC is going to be another pipeline for the college to help us with our enrollment um, and student being prepared for the college. Um, uh, we are working with, uh, speaking of Williams School, uh, with Dr. Uh, Brown regarding uh, bringing UPK, Universal Pre-K, here at the college by way of renting a space uh, for them to be here. And so they've been working with us, so we're in the process of finalizing that contract. So I think it's going to be a great opportunity uh, to really support uh, the community, but particularly the Amherst community. So I'm really excited about that. And Dr. Brown, by the way, was one of the keynoters at that DEI uh, program this uh, week. It's great to work with. And, and part of our relationship with them is that we are using their field for our football uh, team to, uh, to, uh, to do the game. So I think the partnership is great. Um, speaking on that, I also had an opportunity to meet with the supervisor of Amherst, Brian um, Coppola, um, yeah. uh, and his chief of staff um, at our culinary here. So it was great uh, to talk uh, to him about opportunities and how we could uh, really impact uh, the community and really how we could be um, part of their uh, vision, for the, particularly for the Amherst uh, area. Um, Another meeting, I had a meeting with um, Ben Switek uh, and Paul Brown. He's the international mm -hmm. vice president of, uh, of local number nine uh, to talk about building trade and an opportunity for us to really collaborate and do more uh, apprenticeship opportunities. So uh, more on that uh, as we move forward with, the, um, with, that, uh, with that work. Um, I think I'm good. Yep. We're good. Very good. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Any questions? As far as old business, uh, I only had two items to bring forth. One is to just uh, keep in front of us the need for a state of the college address yes. in the wake of your listening tour, which I know has been a prerequisite to that address. <coughs> but uh, we need to think about the timing of when you want to brief the community on really all the successes we've been having uh, here at SUNY Erie. It's time to change the narrative about this college. Speaking of that, if I may add, I, I did uh, forget to mention that. So we have completed all the uh, internal uh, listening session. Uh, we, we did one separate for the auto tech as, we, as those students are a little bit away from the South Campus, so they gave us a lot of perspective as well. Uh, we are in the process right now uh, setting a date to meet with the larger community, so we will be doing that in the month of April, as well as do one virtual for our students and also for our faculty staff who thought a virtual uh, portion of that would be great. So uh, we have a lot of data and I'm really looking forward to doing the state of the college uh, come fall. Exciting. Yeah. Uh, transportation is just something that we in the budget committee want to keep front and center in front of the trustees. All the trustees are interested in this. It's a, a significant barrier uh, mm -hmm. as we see it. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you are surveying the students and I just want to keep that moving forward in a, in toward a, re a conclusion that we either are satisfied with the current arrangements, or if not, how can we improve them? Yes, and that was one of the things that 
is constantly coming, uh, came up uh, as the listening session, both for the uh, student side as well as the faculty and staff, uh, as well as our uh, student services in terms of the auxiliary services, uh, food and others that students are very concerned. So we are working on that uh, to be able to impact, uh, certainly by fall, we'll have a lot of things in place to um, set off the, the concerns that were brought up. All right, uh, other items of old business. Any items of new business that were brought up that haven't been discussed? If not, I'll take a motion, please, to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing uh, any or all of these topics. Collective negotiations, uh, not likely to have a big discussion on that. Uh, the proposed acquisition, sale, or lease of real property, that will be the main focus of it. Uh, a motion to that effect? To Thank go with you. Thank you. And second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are now out of regular session. We are in executive session. We'll reconvene at, uh, let's say, five minutes, 11 o'clock.
All right. Uh, let me know, Bob, when we're back in public. We are. Okay. Um, announcing that we are back from executive session. Uh, we had a discussion primarily of um, uh, matters relating to the leasing and acquisition of real property. We did not take any formal action during executive committee, and we'll have further report on uh, the matter that we discussed, South Campus, uh, at our next meeting. All right, so a motion to adjourn our public meeting, please. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you later.